Uh, let's talk about all the room for mischief making because we saw in Arizona last time and in Nevada, the longer it takes to process and count, the more people like the guy in Mar-a-Lago can say, and Carrie Lake already was saying even before the election, well, that just proves, you know, that there's all these evildoers. And then you had the ridiculous circus in Arizona of all of those recounts and, you know, the audits and whatever was going on there. So th this, this surprises I me. Mean, surprising that we got the Pennsylvania results last night. None of us expected that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because the, the, the election deniers have a problem here because in Nevada, <laughs> the Republican is ahead. <laughs> so therefore, the late counting ballots are going to be, oh, they're no good, this is all rigged. But in Arizona, the candidate is behind. So the late counting ballots there are going to be peachy swell. This is keen. Aren't, isn't this great? This is working wonderfully, at, le at least from Carrie Lake's perspective, based on the analysis of folks who are looking at this very, very closely. So I don't know how they're going to get their story straight. <laughs> is late counting ballots okay in Arizona, but not okay in Nevada? And I do think it's interesting that he didn't have the drop box number because Everyone who's looking at this and has really crunched the numbers, by my math, we've got at least 30,000 votes that we know are in that haven't been counted. Catherine Cortez Masto needs that number to be at least 70,000. So that drop box and the mail that comes in the next few days, um, that now is the big number for everyone who is in the boiler room for the DSCC and counting, and, and they have all their projections and they know what's supposed to be there. And based on what they told me this morning, uh, they feel pretty good if, they, if there's 100,000 more ballots. If there's 70,000 more ballots, they feel, mm, yeah. If it's under 70, it's going to be a hand wringer. How is the Democratic operation in Nevada without Harry Reid? Look, I think they still have Rebecca Lamb, who is uh, the Harry Reid machine driver, um, and uh, they still have that machine that they're turning out across the state. But there are some challenges, and we'll see this play out in 2024, because it is likely Nevada will continue to be an early state. Um, and that includes the fact that uh, Nevada is a place where people move in and out of. It's a very transient state, so when you're looking for addresses for reliable voters, it's a little bit harder there. Uh, the culinary workers are a force of nature. They will continue to be. They certainly are in this race, and there's a lot of reliance on them. Um, so everyone I talk to in Nevada says, Rebecca Lamb, the Reed machine, still in place. I mean, without Harry Reid, he's certainly a loss, but, you know, they're still operating there, and the Democrats are going to very much need it uh, moving forward in 2024. And of course, Nevada has been hit a lot harder by the economy, by inflation, by recovering from COVID and the, all, all of what happened to hospitality and also real estate. Yeah, they, they've been double whacked by inflation because they've been hit by costs, um, gas prices, cost of food but also that impacts tourism and that is an employer especially in Clark County which is so pivotal to Democrats of so many people so uh, it is a test case in that sense um, and it is a state that I think Democrats uh, should be worried about moving forward because it is certainly not as blue as it felt four or five years ago